I welcome you to this tour of Verdi Kalguri. The year the inhabitants of the area were, of course, the Aboriginals who arrived on a land bridge from Asia uh, before the present 40 or 50,000 years. The Wankatha people settled in the Kalguri region. They were nomadic hunters and desert people. Life was very difficult before the white man. Weapons included the boomerang and the woomera, which was used to throw spears with greater force. In this picture, an Aboriginal is holding a woomera used to launch the spear to obtain such game as kangaroos. Other implements used mainly by women included woven baskets, bags, and devices for crushing seeds. The arrival of the Europeans in the early 1890s was to have a major impact on the Aboriginal culture. Aboriginals quickly adopted European dress and implements. Unfortunately, the need for land for the mining of gold led to a displacement of Aboriginals. Many died from European introduced diseases such as VD. The introduction of alcohol also took its toll. Aboriginals were frequently used as tokens, apparent here in this display in Kalgoorlie in the late 1800s. There are still many Aboriginals around Kalgoorlie. This little boy plays with the boomerang. An Aboriginal family enjoys a campfire. An Aboriginal mother with child. A rapid growth of Perth in the late 1800s led to considerable exploration by men, often using camels for the desert. Camels were ideally suited for desert exploration because of their great ability to carry heavy weights and they didn't require much water. Three Irishmen, Flanagan, Hannon and Shea, stumbled across 100 ounces of alluvial gold near what is today the Golden Mile. The gold rush that followed June 17, 1893 was staggering. Men traveled almost 600 kilometers across ground but had no reasonable roads without water supplies or facilities to live in shacks made of canvas and old packing cakes and corrugated iron. The influx of miners into the region was drastic. They brought with them, often on foot, basic supplies, including a pan, a billy can for tea, and a roll to sleep in. Many came unprepared for the harsh living conditions, with inadequate food, scarcity of water, lack of sanitation, and few medical supplies. Thousands died from thirst, starvation, and disease.
With the lack of water, early prospectors used dry blowers to separate the dirt from the gold. Here a prospector uses a dolly pot to crush the rock. From 1893 the settlement rapidly grew. Christmas time for prospectors. The sign says a Merry Christmas. A huge demand for firewood led to the collection of sandalwood and other local woods from the surrounding area. It was used to purify water. Bicycles were frequently a form of transportation in the gold fields. A picture of the settlement taken from Mount Charlotte, the highest point, in 1894. The community was pretty much a bush camp and looked like this. Lack of rain during the summer months in Kalgoorlie and the lack of lakes meant that water was a critical problem. The mining camp was primitive. This photograph is of Hannon Street in 1896 showing the development over three years. By that time, the landscape was littered with open shafts and small head frames. The equipment was primitive. It is reward under the shaft. Another view of Hannon Street in early Calgary. 1896 or 7. Men outside the Melbourne Cafe in Kalgoorlie. In many ways, Sir the Kalgoorlie looked like the Wild West. Everything but the guns. Hannon Street, Kalgoorlie. It really was an empty, desolate place. Water still remained a major concern. The town rapidly began to develop with the growth of mines. New mines, such as the Ivanhoe, attracted huge crowds of people. Condensers were built to provide water, and plans were made to build a pipeline from Mandaring outside Perth to Kalgoorlie. Mines went rapidly underground, and plans were also made to commence a railway from Perth to Kalgoorlie in the late 1800s. By 1900, Kalgoorlie was a humming city, serviced by many shops, a horse-drawn hearse. By 1903, the pipeline had reached Kalgoorlie from Perth and was providing water. A railway link had also been completed. The future of Kalgoorlie seemed bright. Thanks viewers for joining me, Don, on this tour of very early Kalgoorlie. Have a good day.